Hey, what's up everybody? It's Mike from Cornfield Customs and welcome back to the Cornfield Customs channel. Today I have to bend up a custom set of frame rails for a 41 Ford COE or a cab over engine pickup truck. And I also have to do a two by four easy way end cap for the rails. So stick around in this episode when I get these all bent up and ready to ship out to the client. So in this video, I'm going to try to do something a little bit different so we don't have to listen to the hydraulic pump whine on the bender. I'm going to do a little bit of a voiceover. Um, I've sped the video up so you guys don't have to watch it in real time. So some of it sped up to 200% and some of it faster. So what I'm doing here is I am deburring the outside of the tubes. I will go all the way around the front and back, making sure there's no sharp edges, everything's deburred. Then I come back with a carbide tool and I deburr the inside of the tube on the front and back, making sure there's no sharp edges for me to get cut or for the mandrel to get hung up on. Then after all the deburring, I come back with lacquer thinner and I clean all the grease and oil off the tubes. That way it's much easier for me to lay out my bend marks and I don't have to worry about there being debris from shipping or anything stuck to the tube. Then I lay out with the tape measure and grab my bend worksheet and I work through the worksheet from the front edge of the tube in relationship to how it's in the machine, working to the rearward of the tube, marking out all my bend locations. Then I come back with a tool I made and go around the tube on the four inch leg and the two inch legs, marking on three sides of the tube and then I will flip the tube up to mark the fourth side so I have a 360 degree mark for my bend location and I do this since the tube does get rotated in the bender, I will need to have that mark all the way around in certain instances. I also have to bend a two by four easy way U shape for the end cap of the frame. And this is the same process. I deburr the outside, then the inside, and then I come back and clean and lay out my bend locations. Now it's time to get the machine set up. So I have to zero our spindle since the machine was turned off. I do that by going into jog setup and I press the reverse pedal with my foot, making sure that the spindle is zeroed and then I hold zero location. Now we can bend the frame end cap and I have to go in and I do a single bend and we will program in our bend dimension, which is 92 degrees. The bend needs to be 90 degrees, but there's two degrees of spring back. So that's why I programmed 92. Now we come in and we put some bend lubricant inside of the tubing and insert the tube into the bender. I then extend the mandrel, which is being pushed forward inside of the tube. And you can see it pushing the tube out here. Once the mandrel is set, then I line up our first bend mark with our gauge and I use a piece of tubing to hold down on it so I keep my fingers away from the clamp and I engage the clamp to come over. Then I will extend our pressure die that you can see moving into place here. From there, we're ready to bend and I just step on the forward rotation pedal with my foot and it will bend to 92 degrees. Then I will retract the mandrel. It's being extracted away from the tangent point. You can see the red lines that shows it's in movement. When that turns green, I will retract our pressure die, which you can see moving here. Once the pressure die is back to its home location, I can then come in and I will retract our clamp die. And when the clamp die is back to its home location, I can swing the swing arm back to its home location and I can pull the tubing out of the bender a little bit and rotate the spindle back to zero. Then I will extend the mandrel again. You can see it's shoving the tubing out. I will line up our bend location with our gauge and then I will extend the clamp die and then I will extend the pressure die. Once 
once that reaches the 92 degree bend angle that I programmed, I can retract the mandrel, then retract our pressure die. Now retract the clamping die, move our swing arm back to home, and I can pull out our new U-bend and set to the side. Then I will retract the spindle back to zero. Here you can see the bends out of the machine. I just wiped them down again to get rid of any bend lubricant or markings from the layout. So now that I bent the easy way, I have to bend the hard way on the remainder of the rails. So I have to tear the machine down and switch the tooling out. So first I take off our strut bar and now I'm taking off the top clamp of our swing arm. So I will take all of that off and lay over on the table I have here just to set all the pieces. And I can loosen all of our clamp bolts for our main female die. I've sped this up to about 600% just to make it a little bit faster, but it does take about an hour to change the tooling around, do some calibration bends, and be ready to bend from the easy way to the hard way. Next, I remove our wiper die and I put on our tooling dolly, and then I come back and I remove our clamp die assembly and put that in the dolly as well. Then I remove the bracket that holds the wiper die in place and set on the table for later. Then I come over and I adjust the carriage for our pressure die out of the way and then I can bring in our gantry to lift the female side of the tooling out of the machine. I then bring our tooling cart over to the machine and hook up the chains for the hoist. That way I can lift the tooling out and swap it from easy way to hard way. After lowering the easy way tooling down, I disconnect the chains and I take our lift eyelets out of the easy way tooling and thread them into the hard way tooling so we can lift the hard way tooling onto the machine. While the female tool is out of the way, I take the pressure tooling out of the machine and put on the cart and I also reinstall the hard way pressure die tool. I then take our clamp die and install and then move our female hardway tooling into place. And lower it down onto the spindle. And then disconnect all the chains, remove the eyelets, and I will move the gantry out of the way. Then I install our hard way clamp bolts, bring our tool cart back into view here, and I start to tighten up our clamp bolts for the female section of the hard way die. I then loosely put on our wiper die bracket And then I come in and put the top of our swing arm back on and the three bolts into place and I tighten those down. Then I can put our strut bar or our support bar back in place and tighten up to help support the spindle. Now I'm snugging up all the bolts for the wiper die and the wiper, wiper die bracket and then I come in and I loosen up the mandrel and its adjustment points because I have to adjust the mandrel to the proper location at the tangent point. So I measure from the solid surface of the mandrel to the face of the die until the predetermined dimension is achieved. Then I can tighten up all of our jam nuts and adjusters on the mandrel. From here I have to calibrate our pressure die, locate our wiper die in its final location. So I've installed a section of tubing into place over the mandrel and then I've brought the clamp die in and then I set our wiper die location and tighten everything down. And then I come over and adjust the pressure die carriage and we will do a test bend at 90 degrees. Once our pressure die and our clamp die are retracted, 
I will take the test piece out and re-zero the machine. From there, I wipe all of the grease and oil off of our test bend and I inspect it for any cracks, splits, discoloration, or excessive wrinkling. Happy with the way everything looks, it's time to start bending the rails. So here I have the first rail and I am applying bend lubricant inside the tube and to the mandrel. And then I will install the tube into the machine. Here I'm lining up the mandrel to go inside of the tube and then I will fully insert the tube into the machine. I will set our first bend angle per our worksheet and I will extend the mandrel and line up our first bend mark. Then I can extend our clamp die, then the pressure die, and I can bend the first bend. Once bent, I will retract the mandrel, then our pressure die, then our clamp die, swing the swing arm out of the way, pull the tube out a little bit, zero the spindle, and then I can extend the tube and the mandrel to the next bend location. Then I will extend our clamp die, then our pressure die, and I will execute the second bend. Once bent, I will retract the mandrel, retract the pressure die, retract the clamp die, swing the swing arm out of the way, zero out the spindle, change our bend angle. I will rotate the tube so the bend is in the opposite direction as the bend worksheet notes. Line up our bend line, extend our clamp die, our pressure die, and I will make the third bend. Once bent, I will retract the mandrel, then I will retract the pressure die, then the clamp die, swing our swing arm out, and re-zero the spindle. I'm bringing in a cart just to help support the tube, and I will change our bend angle, extend the mandrel, pull the tube out to the next bend location, get everything lined up, extend our clamp die, our pressure die, and bend our fourth bend. Once bent, I will move the cart out of the way. I will retract our mandrel, then our pressure die, then our clamp die, then re-zero our spindle. Then I will rotate the tube for the final bend. Using the cart again to help support it, I will extend the mandrel, line up our final bend location, bring the clamp die in, then the pressure die, and I will bend the last bend. Then I will retract everything again, the mandrel, pressure die, clamp die, re-zero the spindle, and I will also do our first bend for the second rail program, that way it's set up. Then I will bring in the second tube, and I will repeat that entire process for the second rail. One thing I like to do that I've noted in other videos is I lay them out with one weld seam up and one weld seam down, that way when you bend the sections, both weld seams will be inside of the frame, which I think is just a nice touch. So this is repeating the process that I've done on the first rail, just duplicating to have a match set. This section of the video is sped up to about 600%. In the video, you can see me changing the bend angles and operating the controller to extend and retract the mandrel, the pressure die, the clamp die, and then using the foot pedals to control the spindle. This is the final bend on our second rail, and then this section is wrapped up. All right, so that wraps up another set of custom bent frame rails, and they're ready to head out to Mobile, Alabama. So if any of you guys out there are working on your projects and you want or need a custom set of frame rails or tube sections bent and two by four 120 or 188 wall or two by three 120 wall to help take your project to the next level, hit me up in my email or down in the comment section and we can see what we can do to help you out to take your project to the next level. 
Um, I do want to thank you guys so much for checking out another tube bending video as well as all my other content. Uh, I'm getting a lot more feedback from you guys, a lot more views and shares, and it's greatly appreciated. And you guys are really helping make this channel kind of take off. And it's, uh, it's really helping me get motivated to put out more and better content and work on getting the edits where they need to be to keep you guys coming back. So thank you so much for the continued support. And if you want to support me on a different level, um, head over to my Patreon, which I will drop down in the comments section below. And I've got some really good incentives for you guys and working on growing those and really getting the Patreon set up so you guys will have a different experience than just watching here on YouTube. So again, thank you guys so much with checking this video out and all our other ones. And remember, get out there and make something, not excuses, and we will catch you on the next one.